Hello, my name's Chris Wraith. I'm the Technical Officer for the International Powered Access Federation. And today I'm going to talk to you about preventing entrapment when using a MUP. Um, for those who don't know what MUP is, MUP stands for Mobile Elevated Work Platform. And during the course of my talk, I'm going to talk about the, uh, the frequency of entrapment, how often it happens, is it a regular event or a rare event, the common causes of entrapment, uh, means of minimising the risk of entrapment, and then I'm going to discuss uh, additional devices that can be attached to MUPs in order to minimise that risk. MUPs have become very popular over the last 15, 20 years. Uh, and you can see why when you look at the picture there and the practices that uh, uh, are now uh, totally illegal, totally unsafe, and MUPs can do the job safely and efficiently. MUPs also um, are a very safe means of working at height, uh, and when you compare the number of reportable injuries uh, from means of working at height, MUPs is uh, a very low when you compare it to other means of like ladders or scaffolding. As you can see from the graph there, which is taken from HSE statistics between 2010 and 2011. So MUPs have been very important in reducing falls, fall accidents. However, you need to be aware that MUPs, uh, as their popularity grows, are being used more and more. As you can see from the picture here, the example. They are also being used in higher and higher situations and in more complicated, more intricate situations. The common height of a machine 10, 15 years ago used to be about 60 to 80 feet. It is now uh, 120, 130 feet. And just recently there was a machine uh, brought onto the market which reaches 170 feet. That is why IPAF has launched a, a operator training program and currently worldwide we have over nearly, nearly half a million people trained uh, when holding current powered access license cards to operate these type of machines. So with the large amount of machines they have to be managed and they have to be managed efficiently and safely. However, unfortunately accidents do happen and research shows um, that over the last 10 years there have been a significant number of accidents involving mobile elevated work platforms. The health and safety laboratories have done some research and they've looked at uh, accident stats in the UK, in the USA and New Zealand over a 10 year period and uh, they've re looked at the reportable incidents to those organisations and as you can see from the table there have been a, a significant number of accidents involving scissors and booms. But if you look at the top, the major cause of accidents and injury is from falls, falls from the platform. Then the second most significant is overturns, where the machine has turned over. And entrapment, being trapped, is the third most um, common cause of injury when working in a mobile elevated work platform. So although we're talking about entrapment to here, here today, it is not the most uh, serious and the most common cause of accidents in MUPs. And as you can see from the pictures, these are some of the consequences of people or incidents where uh, people have been trapped um, in baskets and platforms. So how do we prevent the trapping and crushing in platforms? Well, in 2010, the Strategic Forum for Construction Plant Safety got together and produced a guidance document. And if you do nothing more today, I would urge that you go to the website address at the bottom of the picture and you download the document which is for free and read it and follow the guidance in that document. The document is set in two parts. Part one is for managers and supervisors to help them plan and organise the work of MUP. The second part is in the form of uh, uh, simple instructions and can be used as a toolbox talk to help operators and rescue people how to manage uh, the use of MUPs in order to minimise the risk of, of entrapment. And in that document it highlights the causes of entrapment 
and the main causes of entrapment are when the boom or the scissor is uh, elevated, reversed or slewed into an object or when the mup is being driven over some kind of obstruction, uneven ground and the basket surprise, suddenly shoots up in the air and wedges somebody against an overhead obstacle. Accident investigation has shown that the main causes of that entrapment are poor route planning, poor mup selection, insufficient familiarisation and the other items there which you can see listed. Each one of those, if you can manage those, you will reduce the risk of entrapment on your site. So, take a minute to digest those, in, those points there and think how on your site, when you're using a MUP, you can make your operator safer and reduce the risk of entrapment. Reducing the risk of entrapment is all about good planning. People talk about risk assessment and a lot of people get confused by the word risk assessment, but don't. The word risk assessment just really means good planning. And if you're going to use a MUP or you're going to be involved in ordering, planning or supervising the use of a MUP, you need to do good planning and consider all the points that are listed uh, on this slide. You have to identify the method of work at height. It may not be a mute that is the best piece of equipment for that work. If you do decide it is a mute you need, well then you have to decide what type of mute you need. There are numerous manufacturers, numerous combinations of machines um, and there are hundreds of different models. So choose the correct machine that will do your job, your work at height, safely and correctly. Check the ground, make sure it's level and, and, and safe and, and and un, not uneven, because this is where accident data has shown that is one of the major causes of, of entrapment. Develop a safe system of work for those in the platform to ensure they work safely and correctly and minimise any risk of entrapment. When you've developed plans, communicate those to everybody who is involved, not only in the planning process, but in the operating of the MUP and those managing and supervising on site. Coordinate activities with others who are on the site to minimise the risk of uh, entrapment or distraction. Make sure the operators have the correct PPE. And a lot of the work and the supervision can be done by a MUP champion. Many construction sites now and major sites are developing a MUP champion. Somebody who takes responsibility for the use of MUPs and overseeing the use of MUPs when they're on sites. And a very important part of, uh, of, of planning is making sure you have some kind of emergency rescue plan in place. So if there is an incident and someone does get trapped, there is a plan which is well practiced to, make, to help get that person down safely, quickly and efficiently, and efficiently to reduce the risk of, uh, of serious injury. Another cause of uh, entrapment is when people have jumped on the machines and used them without authority. So make sure you have planning to prevent unauthorised use. Um, and the other things you need to consider is where the machine is delivered or collected from. If it is far from the site, it means travelling long distances and you may have to travel through overhead or around overhead objects which will cause um, increase the risk of entrapment. So these are the things you need to consider uh, when planning uh, the use of a MUP. So those who plan, supervise, manage or work on the machine or are part of the rescue team need to be competent. And competency comes from not only attending a training course but having the skill and the attitude to be able to do their job correctly, efficiently and know and when things are going wrong and know when to say stop and readdress the situation. That is why IPAF has helped by developing courses for operators and demonstrators. It has recently developed a course for, called PAL Plus, which is an advanced operator course for those who identify they are going to be working in areas where the, there is an increased risk of entrapment, such as steel erectors, people erecting netting um, and other jobs on construction sites. 
There is also a, uh, a, a training course called MUPS for Managers, which is specifically designed for those who plan and supervise the UPS of, manage, of MUPS, but do not actually operate and drive them. And then there's courses around harnesses, and there are other courses IPAF develop as well. But these specifically will help anybody who is um, wanting to reduce the risk of overhead, and overhead entrapment. So, we've done the, uh, the planning, we've by, it's been done by the competent people, and now we have to put it into practice. We have to make sure we have to have correct and good site practices in place. So when a machine is delivered to the site, that people are familiarised on that particular machine. So they know the controls, they know um, how, where the emergency lowering devices are, uh, and they know everything about that machine, the safety devices, because not, no two machines are exactly the same. Different models have different controls and different functions in different places. Before you start to use the machine, make sure you do the pre-start checks. Check the machine over to make sure all the functions are working correctly. And if you find any faults or any defects, make sure you will report them and have an incident report and defect reporting system. Site management should do toolbox talks to tell people of the site procedures and also to tell them of the risks they may be exposed to on site. One of those may be from using different types of materials in the platform. So there needs to be some kind of safe site procedure for material handling. And to make sure the tasks are all done well, there should be some good supervision by a competent person. Maybe this MUP champion could be that person. There also needs to be a nominated person on the ground to be able to effect some kind of rescue should something go wrong, should somebody be, become entrapped when they are working in the air. The key must be in the ground control station because no ground rescue can be affected unless there is a key there to activate the ground controls. So if you have all these procedures in place, the only thing left to do is put them into practice. And one of the key things you should do is practice the rescue procedure. So don't forget, when you've got these procedures in place and you've got a nominated person on the ground, make sure they also get involved in practicing the rescue procedure. If you have all those procedures in place, you've done the correct risk assessments and planning, and you have got it all done by competent people, and the procedures are working, the MU is very safe, it is designed to be safe, uh, and they are, there is very little risk of entrapment. But if, if your risk assessment, your planning identifies, you need extra protection, you need an additional safety device. In the past few years, manufacturers and other companies have developed safety devices which may help you. These come in several forms, two main forms really. There's one kind of which provides a protective structure, as you can see from the pictures on the right hand side. There are others which provide some kind of sensing, pressure sensing device and provide an audible alarm as well. And these are the other three pictures on the left and at the bottom of the picture. Some of them are standard fitted by the manufacturer. Others are additional equipment which your rental company can supply. Currently, they are only available for boom type mupes. But there is development for scissor lifts and boom vehicle mounted trucks but they are not available as we are filming at present. There are other devices out there which are available as well. Um, there are many more which will possibly come on the market as well. You may think well why doesn't the manufacturer just develop a system? I've got a good idea. Well it isn't as simple as that. You can't just put any old device on a machine to prevent entrapment. It needs to be tried and tested, have manufacturer's approval and it has to be considered to make sure it does not expose the user to greater risk than the risk of entrapment. That is why it takes between three and four years as a minimum for any entrapment design 
to go from the th from a design on a page to actually becoming a practical solution which is available in the marketplace. In 2012, IPAF produced further guidance to support the Strategic Forum Plant Safety Guidance, which we've already discussed, and to help people who are planning the use of MUPS to be able to decide what types of entrapment devices are available. The document is only a small document, about four pages, and I urge you look at it and read the content. Selecting an entry entrapment device isn't a simple solution and shouldn't be the first choice. The HSE state the fitting of any device alone will not prevent an entrapment accident. How effective a device is depends on where and how it is being used. They go on to say it requires a case-by-case -case risk assessment for each MUP working at height in where there is an increased risk of entrapment. They also say that before you choose an additional device the correct planning procedures have to be gone through, as we have discussed. They have to be done by the competent people and the site procedures have to be in place and checked that they are working. So, as the HSC say, choosing a device isn't the first choice. There are a lot of planning and other procedures that have to be in place before we get to this point. So in conclusion, as we've already discussed, there has to be correct planning and risk assessment to identify where there is an increased risk of entrapment when using MUPS. Because generally, if used correctly and maintained correctly, MUPS are a very safe and efficient means of access to work at height. You have to make sure you have selected the correct MUP for the job as there are hundreds of different choices and selecting the, an incorrect machine will increase the risk of entrapment. Those involved in the process of working at height, from managing to supervising to carrying out to being there to effect an effective rescue, need to be competent. There needs to be extra supervision when somebody is working at height and there is an increased risk of entrapment and there has to be a good workable rescue plan which has been communicated to everybody and is practiced. So, in conclusion, I urge you to look at the Strategic Forum Plant Safety Guidance document and put into practice everything that is in that gui guidance document. So, thank you for watching and if you require any more information on the safe use of mobile elevated work platforms, please don't hesitate to visit the IPATH website. Thank you.